In this one, we'll uh, recommend the optimized settings for running Helldivers 2 on the GeForce RTX 360 and the 4060 laptop GPU at 1080p and 1440p over 100 FPS in the 100 to 120 FPS range using the ideal mix of quality and performance. While the GeForce RTX 3060 and the 4060 Mobile are, are powerful enough to deliver a consistent 60 FPS at 1080p, we'll be relying on NVIDIA Smooth Motion, which is driver level frame gen to the frame rates over 100 FPS, which drastically improves the performance. You can enable it from the NVIDIA app by simply the Smooth Motion option. So selecting the game and toggling the smooth motion option. Smooth motion delivers a much more consistent experience than any other driver level frame gen techniques. However, if you're on an RTX 3060, you'll need to rely on lossless scaling, a treatment an algorithm which delivers a relatively consistent experience on the 30 series cards. Here we have Helldivers 2 running on the RTX 4060 laptop GPU at 1440p using a mix of medium and high settings, we'll show you that shortly. We're running it with smooth motion enabled and you can see the actual frame rates on the top left under over 120 FPS. We're averaging between 120 and 130. The input frame rates are on the top left these are the input frame rates without the frame gen and are roughly half the actual frame rates. Considering that the 4060 laptop is a relatively low-end GPU, smooth motion, which is driver level frame gen, scales pretty well on a in a game like Helldivers 2. We're averaging consistently well over 100 FPS at all times.
Port the RTX 4060 laptop GPU at 1440p, we highly recommend setting the render scale to quality mode. If you have a 144Hz or 165Hz display, this ensures consistent 120, 110 to 120 FPS on average. If you're limited to 60 FPS or running on a 1080p screen, leave it at native. For the graphic settings, leave the texture quality at high, that's recommended for 8GB cards. Object detail is best set to medium, anything lower and you start seeing pop-ins everywhere. Anything higher and you'll lose a bit of performance without any notable quality gain. Render distance is similar but it affects the pop-in rate for objects in the distance. Medium is optimal, anything higher and you might be CPU bottlenecked at higher frame rates. Shadow quality uh, is optimally set to medium, anything lower and you'll start seeing artifacts, anything higher and you lose performance for nominal uh, edge silhouette improvements. How do you affect the quality of explosions and other particle effects during explosions and intense gunfire? If you can set it to higher settings, but that'll just worsen your 1% lows. Reflection quality is also set to the lowest. This has a very subtle impact on visuals. Uh, it only affects a few surfaces that are glossy, but um, the, vis the quality impact is minimal, but you lose quite a bit of performance. Space quality also set to low doesn't really make much of a difference in Actual missions, ambient occlusion, and screen space, global illumination are enabled. You can disable them, it's really just a personal preference. I recommend keeping them on. They add to the ambience of the scene by adding more depth and colored lighting. Vegetation and rubble are set to ultra. You can drop to high if you are struggling on the GPU side, but um, anything lower than high and then you'll start seeing agitation and clutter just pop as you move around. Terrain quality is also set to medium, anything lower and starts producing artifacts. Uh, volumetric clouds and fog doesn't notably impact the quality at lower settings but has quite the performance hit. Lighting quality sets the travel distance of light rays from artificial sources like lampposts and other electric lighting. If you set it to low, then um, it won't. These lights won't illuminate a scene well. If it's medium, it's the sweet spot. High works best, but comes with a performance hit. Anti-aliasing has a pretty massive performance hit. This is temporal anti-aliasing. Disabling it grants you a nearly five to ten percent improvement, but you see a lot of shimmering along the edges. Asynchronous compute should be disabled on all GeForce RTX cards. AMD cards may benefit from it, but GeForce cards see a notable deterioration in the average performance. Using upscaling at 1080p can push you as high as 140, 150 FPS, but as soon as you'll see enemies on the screen, the frame rates plummet and you'll drop back down to 120. So we recommend native 1080p for the 4060 and the 4060 laptop, ultra quality for the 3060 desktop. So right now we're at around 130 to 40. Now a bunch of enemies will appear and the frame rates will suddenly tank. This is because the game doesn't really utilize higher end CPU as well, unless you have an X3D CPU, that's as much as you're gonna get.
If you're playing on the 4060 laptop GPU at 1080p, we recommend setting the render scale to native. For the 3060 desktop, it should be set to ultra quality. That's for uh, 100, 120 FPS. For 60 FPS, it should be on native on all GPUs. Uh, the graphics settings are set to high or medium for most, object detail at high, uh, render distance to medium, shadow quality at high, and reflection quality to low. This uh, minimizes pop-in and maximizes uh, your view distance. Ambient occlusion and screen as global illumination are both enabled. The pop-in and vegetation density again at ultra, terrain quality at high. These two also maximize uh, the draw distance and minimize the pop for vegetation and clutter. Volumetric fog and clouds are set to the lowest, they don't really impact anything. Uh, lighting quality is set to the highest. This maximizes uh, the illumination in scenes. There are a lot of artificial lighting. Anti-aliasing is enabled. Um, asynchronous compute is disabled because it should be disabled on all RTX and GeForce cards. These frame rates at 1080p on the 4060 mobile, they'll grant you a consistent 120 FPS with occasional drops to 100 FPS. Uh, for the 3060, we recommend uh, using ultra quality upscaling. Of course, if you're on a 60 Hz monitor, then native is recommended at 1080p on both cards. <laughs>